Sea serpents or dragons of enormous size have been mentioned in various mythologies and religions, including Greek, Norse, Mesopotamian, Judaism, and Christianity, among others. One particular creature that appears in numerous stories is the Leviathan, whose origins are rooted in multiple cultures. Before delving further, let's explore some of these origins. When discussing Peter Binsfeld's classification of demons, Leviathan emerges as one of the seven princes of hell, specifically the Prince of Envy. Scholars like Thomas Aquinas described Leviathan as a demon responsible for punishing the envious by swallowing them whole. This interpretation suggests that Leviathan represents more than just a colossal sea creature, it is also seen as a place where the damned are sent, with its gaping more symbolizing the gates of hell. In the Greek Old Testament and the Book of Revelation, the term Leviathan translates to dragon. In ancient texts, dragons and serpents were not precisely defined terms and often referred to similar creatures. While the Old Testament does not directly associate Leviathan with the devil, the Book of Revelation portrays a mighty battle between God and a seven-headed dragon, symbolizing evil and the devil. Two monsters accompany the dragon during this conflict, the first beast rises from the abyss, and the second emerges from the earth. This association with the Leviathan stems from the description of the first beast rising from the sea. Regarding the story of Jonah being swallowed by a whale, some biblical scholars suggest that this incident might actually involve the Leviathan. The explicit mention of the Leviathan appears in the Book of Job, where it is described as a sea monster that humankind is helpless to conquer. The creature's appearance is vaguely described as having sharp teeth and scales, leading to an ongoing debate about which creature might have inspired the Leviathan ranging from a massive crocodile to a giant whale, a multi-headed sea serpent, or an extinct species from the ocean's past. In Judaism, it is common to pair Leviathan with Behemoth, with Leviathan representing the oceanic monster and Behemoth the land-dwelling creature. In the non-canonical Book of Enoch, Leviathan is described as a female monster dwelling in the depths of the ocean, while Behemoth serves as its male counterpart found in the desert. These two creatures are destined to be slain by God when the end comes and will provide sustenance to the righteous followers. The Talmud further describes Leviathan as a great fish, going beyond the biblical accounts. Its skin is said to cover the tent during a feast, and those who do not consume its flesh will receive clothing made from its skin. The remaining skin will adorn the walls of Jerusalem, radiating brightness to illuminate the world. This description implies that the Leviathan must be an exceptionally large fish. One account in the Talmud depicts the creature as having horns, a gaping jaw, and a body stretching 300 miles long. The term Leviathan appears six times in the Tanakh, Hebrew Bible twice in the book of Job, twice in Psalms, and twice in the book of Isaiah. However, the descriptions vary. In Isaiah 27, Leviathan is depicted as a torturous serpent residing in the sea, possessing impenetrable scales. The book of Job provides the most detailed explanation of its appearance, describing a fire-breathing monster lurking in the ocean, an embodiment of chaos and an untamed beast that humans could never hope to overcome. Only God has the power to defeat this creature, emphasizing that Job and anyone questioning their place in the divine order should acknowledge their need for further understanding. In Mesopotamian and Babylonian mythology, we encounter some of the earliest accounts of the Leviathan or similar creatures. The Babylonian creation myth features Tiamat, a primordial goddess of the sea, who mates with Abzu, the god of fresh water. In one variation, Tiamat represents the goddess of creation, and her union with Abzu gradually gives birth to the cosmos. However, their children plot to overthrow them, resulting in Abzu's death as he defends his throne. Tiamat then transforms into a monstrous embodiment of chaos, a serpent or dragon. To seek revenge, she creates various monsters. Ultimately, she is defeated by the god Marduk, who fashions the heavens and the earth from her body. The Leviathan has assumed diverse forms throughout its mythology. Which creature do you believe inspired its appearance the most?